Amen. Amen. So over the next uh, remaining three more weeks, so for five weeks total, because we began last week, we will be dealing with the Gospel of John chapter 6. One chapter for five weeks. And every week, the theme is going to be bread. We're going to talk about bread. Bread is important in the Gospel of John. It's mentioned over and over and over again. Jesus is continually referring him to himself as the bread of life. There's something important about the simplicity and the ordinary nature of bread. The other thing that's powerful about bread is that bread, typically, even in the ancient world, was available in every household. If you were hungry, you were still able to get some bread. So bread was always present with people wherever they were, whether they were at their house, or whether they were at a friend's house, or whether they were in the community. Bread was the staple that filled your tummy. But you know what? It doesn't sustain you, does it? It fills your tummy just for a moment, makes you feel good. But there's not a whole lot of nutrients in most bread, would you say? I mean, you can get some things out of bread, but if you just existed on bread alone, it wouldn't be a good diet, would it? Which made me think of Wonder Bread. Did anybody else grow up on Wonder Bread? When I was a kid, I remember I thought Wonder Bread was special because this happens to be one of the greatest marketing themes ever in the history of the world. I mean, what little kid doesn't want to eat Wonder Bread? I mean, just the word wonder, awe, spectacle, mystery. There must be something about this bread that is special. Matter of fact, Wonder Dog eats Wonder Bread. That's right. My wife told me just today when I was talking about Wonder Bread, she said the best sandwich in the world is Wonder Bread and Miracle Whip. <laughs> I mean, delicious, right? <laughs> Nutritious? No. no? I remember as a little kid, too, that one of my Sunday school teachers, long, long time ago, I just always remember this word. She, she said, Jesus is like Wonder Bread. And so whenever we were in the grocery store, we were walking around, and we walked past the Wonder Bread aisle, and I'd think to myself, there's Jesus Bread. <laughs> I mean, it's an exciting wrapper, isn't it? Wonder Bread was actually created in 1921. And it has some pretty, uh, it has some fame to it, all right? First of all, Wonder Bread was the first loaf of bread that was sliced, pre-sliced. And so you get the saying, greater than sliced bread. Because that was like, wow, sliced bread, who would ever thought of it? You know? The other thing, too, is that bread back in those days would perish rather quickly. So when you bake the loaf of bread, you wanted to keep it consistent. You wouldn't want to slice into it because it would go stale. Wonder Bread was the first bread where they added enough chemicals <laughs> and it would not go stale. <laughs> And early on in 1921, when Wonder Bread was developed, it was offered because it was a cheap meal. Part of it is that they, they worked on the grains that went into the bread so much that they starched it out. That's why it's white bread. And they robbed all of the nutritional value out of the bread. So basically, you're eating styrofoam. <laughs> A friend of mine used to say that Wonder Bread is the closest thing to Play-Doh that you'll ever find. <laughs> and I would actually have to reverse that because I believe Play-Doh took everything from Wonder Bread. <laughs> Did you ever get a loaf of Wonder Bread and you take the, lo the little slice and you mash it up in your hand? It becomes a little gooey lump, doesn't it? <laughs> it's great for trout fishing, by the way. You put a little Wonder Bread on the hook, you throw it out there, woo! You got yourself a fish. Matter of fact, later in 1940s, they started adding nutrients to Wonder Bread, and they began a whole nother ad campaign about the nutritional value of Wonder Bread. It has all the essential vitamins and minerals, but none of them are natural. <laughs> now, not to knock Wonder Bread too much, it did eradicate two diseases in the world, by the way, because of the nutrients they were putting into the bread and to the children who were eating it. So at least there's some redeeming value in Wonder Bread. But when it comes right down to it, Wonder Bread ain't that wonderful. Wonder Bread is not going to sustain you. It might fill your belly for a moment, but then it's gone. And I got to thinking about in our lives how many things we connect with because we think that they're going to add value or that they're going to be a quick fix, or an easy answer. 
Anybody buy a lottery ticket? <laughs> Any of you win yet? I can tell you haven't won because I've seen it reflected in the offering plate. <laughs> Because somebody's going to win, right? Somebody's going to win. And if I win, I'm going to change the world with this wealth that I have. Baloney. <laughs> You've seen the, the, the TV show that came out about lottery winners and how miserable their lives are after they win all that money? Because guess what? Money doesn't bring you sustained joy. Amen? It might meet the need for a moment. It's kind of like... Well, the nutritionally rich wonder bread. Fast food. Is there any value in fast food? No, there's not a whole lot, right? How about this? Diet plans. Anybody ever been on a diet plan? You know there's two different types of diet plans. There's a diet plan that works, and there's a diet plan that doesn't. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And you know what the difference between the two is? The one is a scam. They're offering you this hope, this, this desire that in 20 days you can have a beach body. <laughs> Graduation around the corner, try Wonder Diet, right? And we buy, pay, pay money for all that stuff and we accumulate all the, the gadgets in order to, to get ourselves thin again. And guess what? We might get thin for a week or two. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, whoop, it's back. Y'all know, y'all are chuckling because you've been there, right? But a diet plan that weight works actually focuses on something different, doesn't it? It doesn't, it doesn't focus on just filling your tummy with what you think might work. It actually is inviting you into a healthier lifestyle. Those are the diet plans that work. But those are also the diet plans that require you to change your life. Your lifestyle. What you eat. It's not something you're just going to do for a couple weeks. It's something you need to do for the rest of your life. I think that's just the truth about it all, isn't it? There's nothing quick. There's no quick fix out there. You want to find results and you need to invest in the things that are sustainable and the things that contribute to your life that lead to your health, your longevity. That's what's happening in the text we read today in the Gospel of John, by the way. You didn't know this was about that, did you? <laughs> you know, Jesus was on the mountain. He, was, he fed the 5,000. That was last week. Uh, and after they had their fill, there was an abundance of bread left over. And then Jesus and the disciples decide they need to slip away because they're tired. Feeding 5,000 will take a lot out of you. Right? <laughs> it's kind of like having vacation Bible school. <laughs> so you need to take a little break. And so Jesus went to the mountains with his disciples. But guess what? The crowds, because they wanted more food, began to track them down. And guess what? They found them. There's no place to hide in the world, is there? Not even for Jesus' disciples. And when they found him, they said, what are you doing leaving us like that? And Jesus turns to them, and if you read the text, there's a little snarkiness in there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus is not really content with what's going on. He turns to them, and he says, what are you all doing here? The only reason you're actually following me around is because your bellies were full. But you really aren't interested in the thing that sustains you. And then they say, in response, well, give us the thing that sustains us. Give us the bread where we'll never go hungry again. And Jesus says, I'll give you the bread. The bread is believe in the one whom God sent. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> and what is their response? After eating on a mountain and being fed, 5,000 of them with five loaves and two fish, what is their response to Jesus? Anybody remember? Show us. Perform some miracle. Do a card trick, something that will convince us that you are the bread of life, because we don't believe it. Give us wonder bread. The bread without any nutritional value. It has seven essential vitamins and minerals that were created by human beings. It's sliced. You don't even have to take 
have a knife. You can play with it. <laughs> you can make little horses out of it or animals or something that's stuck in your mouth. They almost choked to death. Give us Wonder Bread. And Jesus turns to them and says, I give you life. I give you life. Don't you want life? You want to step into life? Is, is that requires a little commitment, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, to believe in Jesus is not just to take your load and go home. I mean, to experience the fullness of life in Jesus Christ, you have to accept Jesus Christ. Isn't that what he says? How do I get this? This bread of life, this eternal bread of life. Well, you believe. And I'll take it a step further. You have faith. You trust. You you, you pour your whole life into the one who is the life giver, Jesus. But that's just the beginning of the journey. But it's the journey that will sustain you. Because a relationship with Jesus doesn't go away after a couple hours, leaving your tummy empty, empty again. It fills us every time. And it provides us with the help that we need to find joy and peace and fullness in our lives. It's as simple as that, isn't it? We'll show some kind of miracle. Send out some lightning bolts. Turn some clay pigeons into living doves. Do something, Lord. Prove it to us. I'm with you. I'm present with you. What more can you want? What more can you want? I think the faith journey that we're on, all of us together, and sometimes we view similar to those two different types of diets. I think sometimes we come to church, we come to this journey or this, this invitation to life in Christ as if we want some kind of quick fix. Something just to take care of the moment. But that doesn't really lead anywhere. And it has a very low success rate. Because the next thing you know, you move to another church and try another flavor out. Or you turn to the TV and you listen to some television evangelists tell you this is how it works. Or you start buying <coughs> prayer towels or prayer oil or you start putting bumper stickers on your car. You start wearing Jesus t-shirts to try to convince yourself that somehow God is active in your life. And it's just not a sustainable journey. But the other direction, the diet that actually works, is the one where you step into it completely and fully offering yourself into a relationship with the living God through Jesus Christ. And each and every day when you get up in your bed, say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, but lead me and guide me by your spirit that I may do something creative and new and beautiful in the world today. That I may do no harm, do good, and stay in love with you, O oh Lord. And then step out of the door desiring that, living into that. And guess what? We find sustenance in that. And that's the faith journey that actually leads to something. A transfiguration of ourselves from the old person to the new person. We have then something to offer not only our own families and community, but also the community we call the church. And that is no bleached out wonder bread. That's the bread of life. Feed upon it in your hearts, O Lord. Oh, my brothers and sisters are. Feed upon it. Yeah, in your hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.